So we are back for the installation video. Right, so this video is about doing the bare metal installation on one of your nodes using a USB drive. So yeah. Karsten, you are the man of disaster here. Um, so what's your system doing? <laughs> yeah, I, um, I turned it on. Uh, it takes a little bit before we see, uh, see the, the boot screen or the screen of the BIOS or UV BIOS. Um, and we have seven NVMEs in the system six for the uh, storage that we use later and one m2 nvme for the operating system so here we see a little bit of the screen um, and uh, because nothing is on the systems we don't have a, a boot pop-up where we can choose what to boot we will directly boot into the zandisk right you see it here uh, zandisk usb device okay yeah, we'll talk a little bit about how um, what to do in order to create that boot device later when we have the time uh, jumping through the menus or um, downloading stuff. Yeah, there will be a little bit of time uh, after we uh, we do the first preparation, I hope. So here, this is uh, an uh, English-based ISO, and uh, we strongly recommend that you install the operating system in English. Of course, you can choose the keyboard in your uh, language. Uh, you don't have to use an English keyboard. Uh, why do we propose to install it in English, Bernard? Yeah, if you have any error messages, uh, you don't want to translate them to from your language into English, right? Um, it's not always so easy or uh, add additional work. And even, you know, the, the, the support guys working at Microsoft, they might understand the English uh, originating message much better than your uh, exactly. localized one, right? That's true. So here we have to accept the small Euler. And mm -hmm. then we could upgrade an already installed uh, system, but we don't have that. We have to do the second one. And here we see the devices I talked about. It's six devices starting by zero. So it's seven, zero to six. Mm -hmm. And the bigger ones are the NVMEs that we will use for our storage. And the small one here, the half, roughly half a terabyte, uh, we will use for the operating system. So fingers crossed. Now I can ask Bernard, how do you prepare an USB boot device? Is it hard or how do you no. do it? It's pretty straightforward. So I bought a 64 gigabyte USB uh, stick. Um, I formatted it using FAT32. Um, maximum size there was you know, uh, 32 gigs um, using the Windows tools. I made sure that this is GPT um, uh, partitioning. Um, and um, then I downloaded the Azure Stick um, HCI ISO from Microsoft, um, Google, or do the Bing, um, the Microsoft websites for it. Um, once you enter your credentials or not credentials, but your uh, email address and your names, then um, you can download this operating system. Um, you mount the ISO file, and then I used RoboCopy for copying over the contents of the ISO file to the USB drive. I ejected the USB drive, and that's it. Um, the good thing about having a USB drive is, in order when you need to recover a host from scratch, right? You already have the OS there. Um, you might want to do, you know, um, add your drivers to it um, for uh, further installation. And also, you can do an auto annotant XML file also um, if you have pre settings that you want to choose, like for example the keyboard layout. This is something that you can do. Um, we are not showing this in detail. What we did all with the USB drive. I mean, it, that's basically what what I told you. Uh, we might need to do another video on the uh, USB drive, especially maybe on the annotant part, which I think yep. is uh, quite nice. Um, but this is only interesting if you uh, do a lot of reinstallations of your system or you install a lot of uh, systems that are uh, similar or the same system. So if you buy an Azure Stack HCI cluster every other week, that mm. would be very nice if you prepare that way. Uh, if you install the Azure Stack HCI cluster once, uh, I think the manual way is quite okay, right? Yeah. 
yeah, if you buy a validated node, the operating system is pre-installed, right? Um, however, I think it is a good exercise to have a USB drive. I mean, it's not, you know, taking hours. Uh, you can do this probably if you know what to do within 15 minutes, maybe, right? Um, and um, you have a plan B, you know, if the hardware needs to be reinstalled uh, instead mm -hmm. of, you know, getting a server back from the backup, you might be faster just, you know, creating a new installing one, one yeah. uh, installing a new one, right? Yeah. Um, there is uh, another way where you have to do that. If you don't buy a new system, an integrated or validated node, maybe you want to try Azure Stack HCI on a not supported hardware. Uh, like uh, you can do it's it's basically a modified windows server as of today um, it's very similar to windows server you see it here with the installation process so you can put it on all the hardware it may run and you have all uh, shown it in some videos with very old hardware i think the hardware is seven eight years old that's possible but of course they are not pre-installed with azure stack hci when they came out there was no azure stack hci at all right so you can do it that way or if you install azure stack hci in vms also a possibility to do it from an iso yeah? there you don't even need a usb stick yeah. So the installation, I think, is you know is pretty similar to a classic Windows Server installation, right? Uh, the only thing that might be different is uh, some dialogues are different. Uh, you don't have, for example, the selection dialog for the dip different operating systems, whether you want the GUI or not, right? Um, and also, you're not asked for any product key to be entered. Um, that's not you know necessary for that operating system. Uh, so there are subtle differences, but basically not too much. Right. Not too much. Yeah. Um, so, what? When are we finished with this? I mean, what's the final step of this uh, of this video? When the serv once the server is coming up? Yeah, we have to, of course, to give it an uh, uh, for the local administrator. We have to choose a password, and uh, after we have done that, or, or we have done that, yeah, we will uh, stop this video, and in mm -hmm. the next video, we will show uh, the update of drivers. Of course, many drivers are in the operating system, but that's oftentimes not the final ones or the last ones that, that are there. So we will install driver packages after that. If you have an integrated system where the vendors are nice to provide a very nice packages for the driver installation you don't have to do that but uh, here in this example i downloaded uh, all the drivers from a page from thomas gren these are thomas gren systems they provide the drivers but you have to install them yourself so now there is a process for the password i will choose a password and And as you could see here, this is a GUI-less operating system, right? So this is meant to be a um, a system that is mostly managed remotely, uh, and we'll definitely show you this as well in the next videos. However, for this video, we are done. Um, final step is to give the local admin password and then um, logging on to the system. Okay, so stay tuned for the next video uh, where we continue our installation. Okay. Take care, bye-bye.